Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first screencast of a series dedicated to language attrition. These screencasts are part of the Erasmus Plus project team, Teacher Education about Multilingualism. These materials have been developed jointly by Antonella Sorace, Roberto Spelorzi, and Mattia Zingaretti at the University of Edinburgh. In this first screencast, we will discuss the concept of nativeness, along with the issues related to the characteristics and terminology traditionally associated with native speakers. We will then examine the issues surrounding the supposed disability in the native language by introducing the phenomenon of first language attrition. We will explain what attrition is by also providing some examples of the phenomenon and discussing who is affected by attrition. A widely held belief is that the native speakers are a source of authenticity in regard to the language and the language community that they belong to. As a matter of fact, the concept of native speaker has historically been considered so important that it has been the center of linguistics and language research for years. Different scholars have characterized the native speaker as an ideal speaker and listener with perfect command of the native language, ultimately being taken as the point of reference in language learning. These views have influenced our present day understanding of the native speakers. On the one hand, native speakers are seen as gatekeepers of their first language, on the other, second language learners should aspire to be like them as the terminology employed in research unfortunately reinforces. However, there are different issues surrounding the concept of native speaker and the way it has been described so far. For instance, the main assumption is that the native speaker is monolingual, when nowadays many people live in multilingual and multidialectal societies. As a result, terms such as first language or mother tongue are highly problematic when a speaker may acquire more than one language from birth and any parent may have provided bilingual or multilingual input to a child. Also, the so-called mother tongue or native language may not always be the dominant language as bilinguals acquire and use their languages with different people in different situations of life and for different purposes. Something less obvious but particularly interesting here is that the changes in language dominance and use may also affect the native language with regards to different aspects. This phenomenon is referred to as first language attrition. I will now provide some example as to how attrition works. Lexical attrition can be of varying degrees. Less intense manifestations of lexical attrition range from slower word recall, where speakers may take longer to retrieve a word from their first language, to lower accuracy and complexity. These occur when individuals experience a decreased ability to accurately retrieve words from memory, particularly words that are more complex or nuanced. Pauses, repetitions, hesitations, and self-corrections are also examples of lexical attrition. Some severe instances of lexical attrition have also been documented in specific circumstances, leading to the near loss of first language vocabulary. An example of less intense lexical attrition has been reported in a study looking at English-speaking learners of Spanish who were immersed in Spanish while living in Spain. After only three months in Spain, these students were found to produce fewer words in English than monolingual speakers of English in their home country. On the other hand, examples of more intense lexical attrition have been reported for adoptees who seem to have lost the language they previously learned in childhood. However, some scholars have argued that such cases should rather be considered instances of incomplete acquisition of the first language, 
rather than attrition. Turning our attention to grammatical changes in the first language, that is to say, syntactic attrition, these are likely to be noticed in very specific contexts. Some examples of syntactic attrition have been reported in the interpretation and production of personal pronouns. Let's take two examples from Italian. Both options are possible in Italian. A. Roberta saluta Antonella mentre lei attraversa la strada. And B. Roberta saluta Antonella mentre attraversa la strada. Now, while both sentences may seem to be similar, Roberta greets Antonella when she crosses the street, the meaning of the sentence relies on the presence or absence of the pronoun. Specifically, lei, she, in a, is usually interpreted by Italian monolinguals as referring to the second person mentioned previously, that is, Antonella, meaning that it is Antonella who is crossing the street, or alternatively, a third unmentioned individual. On the other hand, in B, it is Roberta who is crossing the street due to the absence of the pronoun, which is allowed in Italian. In English, by contrast, only one option is available. Roberta greets Antonella while she is crossing the street, where the pronoun is usually interpreted as referring to the subject of the previous clause, that would be Roberta. In this context, Italian speakers of English have been found to overproduce the option shared by both languages in Italian, that is, Roberta saluta Antonella mentre lei attraversa la strada, or Roberta greets Antonella while she is crossing the street, when Italian monolinguals would rather drop the pronoun lei and produce B, Roberta saluta Antonella mentre attraversa la strada. And lastly, changes at the level of sounds, that is, phonetic and phonological attrition, are also reported in the first language, though research in this area is relatively limited. Some aspects of language sounds are particularly prone to L1 attrition. For instance, the production of sounds, such as in the intonation of a sentence, and the perception of sounds, for example, when picking up on foreign accents. In particular, certain aspects of the first language of second language speakers, such as intonation, may begin to resemble their second language, which can lead to differences in how the language is spoken compared to monolinguals. Moreover, the perception of sounds in the first language of second language speakers may also be altered in comparison to monolinguals of the same language. For instance, when trying to pick up on foreign accents, Thus, it may be more difficult for second language speakers undergoing attrition to understand different accents or even dialects within their first language. Importantly, all speakers of a second language, that is bilinguals, may experience first language attrition to a different degree, depending on a variety of factors. Some of these factors include proficiency in the second language, length of residence in the second language country, and context of use of both languages. Crucially, more recent research reports findings on the short-term effects of the second language on the first. For instance, in a study of Spanish-English bilinguals living in the U.S. for more than five years, attrition effects were found to decrease as a result of re-exposure to the first language in Spain after only one week. So, to briefly recap what we've discussed in this screencast, we started by challenging the notion of native speaker by showing how the traditional characteristics and terminology related to the native speaker reflect a monolingual point of view which is especially outdated in our present day world, where most speakers are multilingual or at least multidialectal. And even more interestingly, speakers of more than one language are known to experience changes in the way that they understand and produce their first language from early on. These changes affect different language areas, 
from words to grammar and also sounds, but are most often temporary and reversible. Importantly, L1 attrition may be experienced by all bilinguals, although to a different degree, depending on a variety of factors. We hope that you've enjoyed learning a bit more about the phenomenon of first language attrition today. And if you're wondering what the implications of this phenomenon are for teachers and learners, then stay tuned and watch the following screencast.